this shit before because you're all comedians. Almost all of you. But I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I don't care. So the last three years of my life have been a steady burrowing of new lows. <laughs> come to accept that, though. Come to deal with it in a couple ways. Can I mitigate that? The first way was where I took all of my bad news as if it were given to me by an old prospector. <laughs> like, let's say, I get shot down by a girl. Instead of hearing the usual, and I spiel about what a nice guy I am, I hear, Free to die alone? Yeah, I'd be more free to count! <laughs> <laughs> Or let's say I get fired. That happens sometimes. Like, three times in the last six months. But who's, count who's, who's counting? <laughs> but, uh, let's say that happens. And, you know, they're like, Zach, you can't, you know, come in drunk or call to salvage your job drunk. <laughs> That's not something that happened within the last month. Anything like that. Um, I, instead of hearing that, I hear, I hear, Get canned, don't worry about it, there's gold in them hills. <laughs> <laughs> He's a jolly guy. <laughs> or, you know, just when I'm alone with my thoughts, which I'm not going to do for you guys because it just involves a lot of screaming. <laughs> um, I hear, think, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, Afraid of ever making a genuine connection with another human being because of your myriad insecurities. And so I had to retire the old prospector. <laughs> and so... And so, from there I just decided... I'm just going to doggedly pursue any and all silver linings. They've got to be there. There's a playbook I heard. That's a joke from two years ago. <laughs> uh, and so there's this example, like, okay, you know how some people go out and drink, like, what I would consider a reasonable amount, but, you know, teach their own. Um, and they, you know, end up in bed with somebody, and the next day they wake up and they're like, who the fuck is this? I don't get to do that, but I have an equivalent example where I go out and I drink and then I wake up the next morning next to an empty tub of fried chicken. <laughs> now, for those of you who didn't gasp, I said a tub. <laughs> it's not a serving size. It's a cry for help. It's something you bathe in. It's not something you eat out of. <laughs> and next to that, on the chair that I use as a nightstand, is my laptop open to a video paused at about the 20 minute mark of a mostly naked woman in a gas mask and I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm gonna find out, don't worry. But we're not there yet. And you know, normally before, before I implemented this policy, I would've just drowned in shame and self-loathing. But this time I was like, no, uh-uh. I'm my own man. I'm a unique snowflake among snowflakes who's apparently got some fetishes I didn't know about. <laughs> and so I go with it. And in, in the spirit of keeping up with that lack of shame, I'm going to tell a joke that I used to tell all the time that I stopped because it's frankly reprehensible. <laughs> it's, it's disgusting and I'm sorry. But um, pretend I've been telling jokes for the last like four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for listening to that um, honestly on the way here though I, I was originally not going to do the set on uh, non-fiction stories for my life um, I was originally going to be all about just pedophile jokes but I decided on the way over that you know you can't just talk to these people about plowing kids that's not okay. You can't fucking do that. Uh, because, you know, and I think a lot of us will agree on this, actions speak louder than words. So that's why I was late. <laughs> and 
and look, I, I heard some groaning out there, but for those of you who did groan or didn't laugh or were like, ah, whatever you say, I don't know. Uh, they were public school kids. They were fucked well before I ever got there. <laughs> um, and that would be my lowest point, if not for this experience that happened about a week ago. I walked into Taco Bell to pick up, or Pizza Hut to pick up an order. I get my uh, home away from homes mixed up. Um, <laughs> young brands. <laughs> young brands, dog. But, uh, so, uh, I walked in to pick up my order and I'm stopped in my tracks. Because instead of hearing something like, hi, what can we do for you? You know, like a business might say while trying to be friendly but professional, I hear, oh, hey, Zach, what's up? Like, I didn't walk into a business just now. Like, I walked into my buddy's basement, and he's half high and just about to pass out. That would be a new low, like, if I was just a regular at pizza, because that's bad enough. But no, they're talking to me like we are old buddies. Like, we've seen some shit together. Like, I saw his dad slap him or something once, and he formed a bond. No. No, this is an employee at Pizza Hut I've never met before. This isn't a new low. This is a sign of personal apocalypse. <laughs> like, I'm gonna start... Like, the signs fucking line up. Dogs start speaking backward Latin to me in the streets. The moon turns blood red and Pizza Hut turns into cheers. <laughs> so I figured I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta figure out where I went wrong. And I did. And much like Rome, all roads lead to Pizza Hut. <laughs> and so I, I pinpointed it. It was a couple months ago, and uh, I had devoted myself to the noble cause of laying in bed for a week and doing nothing because I was unemployed, hence the prospector. Um, and the only, like, I needed food still. So I just ordered pizza, but I didn't even go through like the effort of calling and ordering. I just used the app on my phone, which was wonderful, because I never have to get up, except for like the moment when the pizza guy knocks, and there's a panic that spreads over me. Like, the kind of shit most people reserve for a terrorist attack, where I'm putting on like pants or a fucking, a robe, if I want to answer the door like a recently divorced wizard or something. <laughs> to get, you know, whatever. And so... About the third day in, though, there was a countdown timer on the confirmation page. So I could, like, time out when to put my pants on so I could answer the door dressed in normal clothes. Like, just a regular guy who wants his party platter of wings at 10 p.m. That's normal. That's just who I am in life. Unique snowflake. So, basically... I see it, and in, in excitement, I'm just like, ah, oh, fucking awesome! Because I couldn't choose between yeah and awesome. I couldn't process two words in my head at once. <coughs> and so that's just, I think I just figured out where everything went wrong. The only things I'd get excited for anymore just helped me slide down the scale of social decay until eventually I'm just going to be Jabba the Hutt without the business savvy. <laughs> I guess... I guess the moral of the story is sometimes life gives you lemons, and then you find out about your lemon allergy. Thank you guys, my name is Zach Troxel.